Hi everyone, in last lecture series we have seen about the principle and working mechanism of affinity chromatography and today's lecture series we can continue this with reverse phase chromatography whereas in this lecture we can see in detail about the principle and working mechanism of reverse phase chromatography. Let's come to the introduction of reverse phase chromatography. Commonly reverse phase chromatography is an adsorption technique whereas it works on the principle of molecular hydrophobicity and in this for separating and purifying the proton highly depends on the hydrophobic binding of solute molecules present in the mobile phase to the immobilized hydrophobic ligands that is attached to the stationary phase. Coming to the reason for using reversed phase chromatography for separating purified protein it involves two different compounds one is normal phase chromatography technique another one is reversed phase chromatography technique whereas in normal phase thing will use stationary phase as a polar compounds and mobile phase as a non-polar compounds for the separation of polar substances whereas in reverse phase chromatography will use stationary phase as a non-polar compounds and also mobile phase as a polar compounds for the separation of non-polar substances coming to the theory of reverse phase chromatography this involves three different theories one is hydrophobic theory another one is partition theory and the last one is adsorption theory Whereas in hydrophobic theory it depends on the mobile phase of the solute to the immobilized N alkyl hydrocarbons or aromatic ligands that occurs via hydrophobic interactions. Whereas in partition theory it involves analytes that distributes between the aqueous mobile phase and the organic stationary phase. And also in adsorption theory it is highly used in reverse phase chromatography this is highly involved as an adsorptive process by experimental procedures. Usually this reverse phase chromatography contains common components whereas the matrix involves the first component in this a reverse phase chromatography medium consists of hydrophobic ligands chemically drafted to the porous insoluble beaded matrix. Whereas the base matrix for commercially available reverse phase chromatography is generally composed of silica or sometimes polystyrene. By using silanol groups on silica surface, two silica gel is coupled to the hydrocarbon ligands using the chloro trialkyl silane reagent. In reverse phase chromatography, the most important component is ligands. Whereas this ligand should be highly specific and selective because this plays a complementary role that has to be interacted with the molecule to be purified or separated. And coming to this ligands, it is highly selective, is predominantly based on the function of the type of ligand that is grafted to the surface of the medium. And whereas here linear hydrophobic chains like N alkyl groups are highly used as a most ligands in reverse phase applications. And a thumb rule should be followed when choosing this ligands. Whenever we need to isolate a molecule that is highly hydrophobic in nature, we have to use the ligand that is less hydrophobic in nature. For example, if we are using or if we want to separate or purify the peptides that may be small or large or medium sized peptides and also various types of oligonucleotides, we have to choose C18 based ligands. And when we are going to purify the proteins and recombinant based peptides, we have to choose C8 based ligands. Normally, reverse phase chromatography highly focuses on retention of isolated molecules inside the column, whereas this highly focused on mixed mode retention. In this mixed mode retention, this results from ion exchange interaction between the negatively charged silanol group present on the silica matrix and to the positively charged amino groups that is present on the isolated or the components to be purified. And the effect of this mixed mode retention increased when retention times with significant peak broadening. Whereas this is represented in the graphical representation where in first graph that is A the reverse phase chromatography this shows a sharp peak so this results in a very less retention time period whenever we are going for mixed mode retention the broad peak represents that it has increased time that is retention of molecules inside the column is highly retented with respect to time in order to maintain the retention between the immobilized ligand matrix and the molecules to be isolated we have to see certain properties of matrix 
and it involves the chemical composition of the base matrix and also the particle size of the bead and the type of immobilized ligands used and also the ligand density on the surface medium and also the capping chemistry used and the pore size of the bead. Mobile phase used in reverse phase chromatography is also called as buffers because this mobile phase is highly dependent on the elution of different compounds. So elution of different compounds is based on changing the pH values. So buffer is highly based on high pH values that is strong buffers or low pH values that is with low or weak buffers. So this buffer changes will elute the compounds at different retention time periods. So here we are using the organic solvents as buffers. So it is also termed as modifiers which adds to lower the polarity of aqueous mobile phase used in chromatography. Whereas the lower the polarity of mobile phases gives the greater its eluting strength in the reversed phase chromatography. So highly used organic solvents includes acetonitrile and methanol and sometimes isopropanol can also be used for eluting different compounds. In reverse phase chromatography the main effect is ion suppression effect whereas the major benefit of using this ion suppression effect in reverse phase chromatography is the elimination of mixed mode retention effect. Here this mixed mode retention effect is nothing but it retain the proteins and peptides that is to be isolated inside the matrix for long period of time. So this can be avoided due to the ionizable silanol gel that is remaining on the silica gel surface and the retention of these peptides and proteins in the reversed phase chromatography can be modified by using different pH of mobile phases so that different concentration gradient elution can be happened between the proteins and peptides to be isolated. To elute the different components like proteins, peptides and oligonucleotides we have to use different elution buffers. If we are not sufficient with those buffers we can use different ion pairing agents. The retention times of solutes such as proteins, peptides and different oligonucleotides of different sizes can be modified by adding some ion pairing agents to the mobile phase. For example, if you want to isolate positively charged peptide, we have to do negative charged ion pairing agent with the positively charged peptides so that it can be easily eluted out. And if you want to do negatively charged oligonucleotide to be separated out, we have to add positively charged ion pairing agent with the negatively charged oligonucleotide so that it can be easily remove the oligonucleotide from the surface. After retention of peptides, proteins and different oligonucleotides, we have to do elution of these molecules for further purification. For doing this elution, we are concentrating on gradient elution. So the concentration of organic solvent is lower in the initial mobile phase than in the final mobile phase that is to be used for elution. And the typical gradients for preparative reverse phase chromatography of proteins and peptides are linear or either it may be binary. That is two mobile phases can be involved for elution of different components based on their concentration gradient. In this reverse phase chromatography usually it involves five different stages for purification, separation of different components of proteins, peptides and oligonucleotides. Whereas in this first stage involves starting condition. In this condition it has to involve the interaction between the porous matrix with the ligand forming immobilized ligand matrix complex. And after this we have to load the sample containing different complex of mixtures and towards this we have to go on adsorption of sample substances on the complementary ligand. So based on the concentration gradient elution type it goes and makes adsorption over the complementary ligand and separates out based on the different molecular sizes or sometimes different pHs of the compounds that is to be eluted out. And after eluting out different components at different time periods of retention time, it involves the end of desorption process. In this process, it comes to the fourth stage, whereas the complex becomes more inactive and it have to be regenerated for doing next separation process, whereas it enters into the regeneration of matrix by using different pH based buffers to be washed off so that the matrix gets regenerated for the next stage of separation. In reverse phase chromatography, the resolution plays a major role for maintaining the high purity of different compounds that is to be eluted off. 
So, the resolution RS is defined as the distance between the center of two eluting peaks as measured by retention time or volume divided by the average width of the respective peaks. And this contributes the purity of highly purified proteins and also different peptides or proteins and oligonucleotides that is present in the mixture of sample. And to determine the highly purified proteins, we have to contribute certain properties like column selectivity and column efficiency and also column retention factor so that the highly purified protein can be easily eluted out based on the selection of different column matrix and different ligand based matrix. Coming to the application part of reverse phase chromatography, so this involves the preparative reverse phase chromatography has different applications so that includes the micro purification of protein fragments for different sequencing steps and also to process the scale up of purification of different recombinant protein products that is produced. Let us come to the end of this session. I hope you have all understand about the principle, procedure and working mechanism of reverse phase chromatography and also the components like matrix and ligands and their interaction for eluting different components for purifying different proteins, peptides and oligonucleotides using reverse phase chromatography. In upcoming series, we can see about the principle, procedure and working mechanism of thin layer chromatography and paper chromatography. Thank you.